Welcome to the Gratitude and Style Podcast. My name is Madeline Jones. And I'm Megan O'Connor. And on this podcast, we talk about fashion, style, and living a life of gratitude. Each week, we invite you to laugh and listen while we explore meaningful topics, answer industry questions, host cozy interviews with peers, and of course, share the ups and downs in life with a touch of gratitude and a splash of style. With over 25 years of combined industry experience, I think it's safe to say we know a thing or two. And what we found at the end of the day is that gratitude is is always in style. Today's episode of Gratitude in Style is brought to you by Lane Bryant. So it is our first episode. Are you super excited? I'm excited. I can't, literally cannot believe that this is where we're at. I know. We started to talk about this about, what, over a year ago? Uh, Yeah, well over a year ago at this point. Pre-pandemic, pre the world we used to know. I know. Well, we had super, a plan. Yeah, we had a plan, but we had to wait. And I think it started at the right time. Where we are right now is exactly where we needed to start. Well, you know, they say God, we make plans and God laughs. So yes. that's literally <laughs> what happened. Like we had an entire plan. We were trying to launch before. And then, of course, everything happened. The world stopped. And we got the chance to reevaluate. And exactly. I think we're coming into this with a little bit more gratitude than before, probably. And style. Yeah, both. I feel like my style changed a little bit during the pandemic, but we're not going to talk about that exactly right now. we don't need to go there. But I would love for people to know a little bit about each of us. Yeah, That's what I would love. So maybe tell them a little bit, maybe five things. Let's kick it off at the five. Yeah. Like a fast five. Fast five. So number one, I'm going to tell you straight out the gate, I am a serial optimist, right? Like I am that annoying person who's like, no, that glass is definitely half full. So that is me through and through. Um, number two, I live and practice a life of gratitude constantly slash very faith filled. So I feel like that's a combo, right? Those two things could be, I think they go hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, number three, proud aunt. I would not, I can't go a day without talking about my nieces cause they are number one. So that is a huge part of who I am and who, what makes me, me. Now I'll give you the career part. I am a fashion stylist and a digital content creator. And those two things have allowed me the luxury of living a phenomenal life of wonderful moments and creating beautiful images and putting fashion out in the world. And it is what brought me to you. And it's how we met. So I feel like that's a huge part of who I am. And we totally have to talk about that. My medium fast five. Yes, that was me. That was a really good medium fast five. Okay, I need yours. Tell the people what they're dying to know. Let's see. I don't know about dying to know, but I'm going to tell you what you need to know. (laughs) Um, I'm a mom. She is 13 years old. God, a teenager. You're a teen mom. Like a teen mom of a teenager. I can't believe that. Yeah. And um, Madison is a beautiful um, young lady, as she tries to call herself. She's a young lady now. She is on the autism spectrum. So I do speak about autism and, you know, autism, you know, autism moms and families and how that affects that diagnosis kind of affects the family Mm -hmm. dynamic. Um, I am a serial optimist, but I also have, I'm very, very transparent on my social media. So this is not always what people see on social. (laughs) This is for them. This is for you. This is for gratitude and style, but this is definitely not what most people see, you know, on social media. Um, I feel like I am, you know, definitely faith based. I have a huge family. We're kind of all scattered everywhere between Puerto Rico, Florida, New York. We're kind of all over the place. Um, so I'm very family oriented. I'm the oldest of three girls. So I've kind of grew up a little tough. I had to be kind of, you know, knock the boys around when they try to come after my sisters. Yeah, you're the so oldest. I'm a little tough. You're in charge. Yeah. It's what makes you in charge. Yeah. That's and why I think you're in the position that you're in too. Exactly. Um, I'm also the editor of Plus Model Magazine. Duh, don't leave that out. Like seriously, 16 years of my life living in service Rewind. of this industry. <laughs> Rewind. How many years? 16 years. 16 years. Yeah. That's in this industry years. as editor-in-chief of Plus Model Magazine. Yeah. I started that magazine literally, you know, on a wing and a prayer. That's wild. Yeah. 16 years is a long... I mean, like, not to harp on it, but that's a long time. <laughs> like, is. that's a it lot is. of time. And thank you, because part of what why I do what I do is because you were doing it first. And I think that's a huge portion. Thank There's so you. many people who feel that way. But 16 years is a long time 
time. 16 years is a really, really long time. (laughs) Trust me, when you live in these shoes, it is a really long time. But I'm very grateful for that time because I grew as a person, as a woman, as a businesswoman, you know, and I've gotten to meet so many amazing people like yourself. So, hey. (laughs) Friendship. And I think the last two things I would like to say is maybe... I was the first grandchild born to my grandfather. My grandfather was a minister, so I feel like that's where my gratitude came from. I was the first grandchild. I really grew up with them. I grew up in Puerto Rico. When I came from from Puerto Rico, as I would think I was nine, I didn't know any English. So when you say first, you mean favorite. Oh, yeah. Oh, absolutely. (laughs) Don't ever talk to my sisters about this. You always got $20, and we had to share $5. Yeah, That's what they would say to you right now. The first is always the favorite. (laughs) Always. I was, and, you know, I love them for it. Rest in peace. But, you know, it is what it is. You know, I really was. But I was also born on his birthday, so I had to be his favorite. I was born on my grandfather's birthday, so, yeah. And the last thing I would love to say is I really do love style. My style definitely has developed. I feel like as a plus-size woman, I wasn't, and I'm, you know, older. Back then, we didn't have the options that we have today. So I shopped with my mom at department stores, and I was a young girl. I wanted to wear acid, you know, jeans, and I wanted to have neon tops, yeah. and those were not available to me at that time. Now you can go to, I God, mean, they have it so easy now. So easy, but back then it was really difficult. So my style definitely did change, and I'm enjoying myself now, no yeah. doubt. Well, I I shopped with my mom too. And it's actually very full circle because I used to, well, it's also like when you get dropped off at the mall and like as a plus size, I've been plus size my whole life. So like as a plus size kid, it was always like, all right, I want to go shopping with my friends and we'd go and like my friends were going like five, seven, nine and like express. And I'd be like, I'm going to the second floor guys. I'll see you later. (laughs) But it's really beautiful full circle moment because my second floor store was Lane Bryant. (gasps) Same. And And so like I would go, that was my place to go. We didn't have anything else. Right. right? And aside from like ordering from the Delia's catalog and like hoping it would fit me when it got to the store. (laughs) Like, like it wasn't like Lane Bryant was a place where I knew I could go and feel comfortable, even if it wasn't necessarily style for my age. It was right. style that worked and right. worked well. And I think the the really nice kind of kismet full circle moment is now we both work with Lane Bryant. Yeah. We both create beautiful content for them. And I am so proud and so grateful to say that they are our sponsor for today's episode, for this episode of Gratitude and Style. Yes. And it's incredible to be able to say that because they have played such a huge part you know, a huge role in our lives. Absolutely. Like just, in, Absolutely. It's just like LB has just been a part of our lives. So it's yeah. very nice to be able to have this new moment for us and our like kind of new um, endeavor and have them along with us. Yes. So we're very, very grateful yes. Thank for you, Lane their sponsorship <laughs> in the Gratitude and Style podcast. And of yes. course, you know, you can shop LaneBryant.com and shop in store and there's tons of opportunities to get great fashion now. It has yes. evolved and there's so much trend and so much great things to shop and yes. color and print and we get and to watch your IG lives on Friday. IG lives Hi. on Friday. Yes. Super fun. Gotta love yes. that. You can see me every Friday on Instagram live. Yes. But um, big shout out to Lane Bryant. Yes. We love them so much. And they have helped us create our lane. And hopefully they can help you guys create yes, your lane. Yes, absolutely. So let's talk about the podcast and what people can expect let's from us. Let's tell them what it is. Yes. Tell us what you think Gratitude in Style is going to be. So I think for us, like, or for me personally, it's a combination of the two huge kind of pillars of my life, right? So like, I live a really full life. I, my world is the fashion industry. It's my career. I love fashion. I love style. I love using that as a form of self-expression. And I think sometimes a form of armor and sometimes a form of protection and empowerment. And it's all those things. And so taking that style, but being really grateful to be able to use that as a language. And I think that's what this is all about, right? This is being living a life of gratitude, using style and fashion as our language, combining that together, and then just like having a chill chat. Like, this is very fun. I feel like, who knew that this is a thing? Yeah. Like, like we this can is what finally, we do on my dining room table. Right? Like, Just this is not, normally... Without Christian's makeup. But right. this is what literally sometimes what we do. Sometimes without a bra. Like, sometimes right. you got to have no bra or a bralette. Like, that's the moment. Right, like, right. But this is really, like, a polished up version, like, where you're looking a little bit better. But this is around <laughs> the kitchen table chit-chat. Exactly. And that's ultimately what this is going to be. Like, exactly. I want people who are listening, like, I want you guys to know this is just a chat. Like we're chilling. We're going to come to you with fun interviews. We have good guests lined up and we are going to give you just 
content about all the things. Yeah. And, and lots of having laughs. really great and conversation wine. and narrative. I feel like for me, the gratitude part started for me. I worked in, in the business, you know, fields for so long before Plus Model Magazine. And when you are a Latina and, you know, you're working among a lot of older people, you're kind of like, you know, you're not taken seriously. And you kind of grow up a little bit tough. You know, I'm the oldest of three sisters, and I kind of had this tough, you know, exterior. But with Plus Model Magazine, I really did learn to kind of bring in that, you know, that heartwarming part of myself and allow myself to be vulnerable. And then I had a child who taught me to look at the world in a different place. And I'll tell you a really quick story. One day we were coming home from school, and she's in the back seat and she's looking out at the Henry Hudson River and she's like, mommy, mommy, look, it's glitter. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, she has glitter in the back of my car. Like it's <laughs> Get, probably all over my never car. Never going to get it out. Yeah. Never. That's it. Th- for glitter years for to life. Come. Never going anywhere. And so luckily I'm in traffic now. So I look, I'm like, one minute, one minute. And I look behind me and she's looking at the water. And the sun like the was glistening oh on God, the water. Oh my God, that's so cute. And so when she said that, it was the moment that I was like, wow, look at the way that she sees the world. How lucky are we to see that? When, yeah. was, when did I ever look at water and the sun and say, wow, look at how the sun glistens on the water. That moment was so profound. That was many, many years ago. But that moment kind of propelled me to even take my gratitude even further. I'm going to walk around being like, look at the glitter on the water. <laughs> look at the sun reflecting on the glitter of the water. That's I love right. that. Yeah, That's really, really nice. And I think like there's life moments that make us more and more grateful. Absolutely. And I think if we can help amplify that in some way and help people start their day or enjoy their commute and traffic or right, right. getting ready in the morning or whatever the case may be, if you're listening to this, however you're listening to this, wherever you're listening to this, I yeah. think it's important that you just take a second to just be grateful for where you are in the moment. And that's what this podcast is about. Yeah. Just And I feel that like I don't want looking it to good be... looking good while doing it. Absolutely. And I also don't want it to be like fluff because I feel like people are like, well, you're really grateful because everything's going your way. Trust me, nothing is going my way. (laughs) Trust me. It is life challenges do happen and not just as a mother, but in business, people assume that we get yeses all the time. Oh, they, they live a great life. So that's why, you know, they're grateful. No, I'm grateful even when things are not going well. That is when you have to truly practice gratitude. Well, arguably more grateful, right? Because ultimately at the end of the day, once you're through it, right. once you're on the other side, you can kind of look at yourself and say, okay, that was brutal. I just had to really like climb that mountain alone, right. but I'm more grateful because now I'm a better person because of it. Maybe it made me stronger. Maybe I got a no or a missed opportunity for a reason because I wasn't supposed to be in that position. I wasn't supposed right. to be there in that moment. Was this your first choice, your first career choice? God, no? no, no. I had no clue. What, what did you do before I this? I used to want to, so when I was in college, I studied communications, which is basically what people study when they don't know what they want to do. So <laughs> I studied communications and I literally was like, I'll just, I'm really good at sales. So I was like, I'm going to be an ad sales exec at a magazine. So like I interned at magazines. Like I thought that was the part of fashion that I was going to be in. Okay. So the business side, like in my mind, I was like, the girl who is going to wear four inch heels and like a six suit and have a corner office. Like that's nice. what I envisioned myself as. Okay. So like, while I was always ambitious, I was not like, I, I just didn't align. That was not my path. Right. And I got out of college. I worked in finance for three years. And when in 2008, when everybody lost their jobs and I lost my job, I got laid off. And I legit went on like a Thelma and Louise journey across the country with my best friend who also lost her job. We were both like finance, like castaways. And we just literally like drove cross country and went on this adventure. And I was like, listen, you know, apparently when you lose jobs in finance, you get some money like so that they send you half crying. So I took that half crying money and I just went and I was like, I'll figure it out along the way. Let me just go on the self discovery. Well, I went on the self-discovery. I went to California. I was like, I'm going to stay here. This is great. Way better out here. <laughs> and realized I like was going to give myself a timeline and right. just immediately was like, I just need to 
figure out my next step and I don't know what it is. But you were going to move there? I was just loving it out there. I mean, who wouldn't? It, the weather was great. Like I was True. young. I was just like living my best life. I did not think about responsibility or like careers or futures or any of that. I was just like YOLO. Um, so I think I gave myself like a short timeline and I remember vividly sitting at Lahaina's in San Diego having a drink with my friend and telling her like, I just really feel like I should work in fashion, but I don't know how, like I just, I skipped, I missed a whole portion of time that I should be doing something. And she was like, well, you're really good at like putting outfits together and like <laughs> you're really great at shopping. And I was like, well, what a weird, that's not a, like a real thing. And it is a real thing. Um, and I remember I put up an ad on, well, I'm dating myself now, but I put up an ad on Craigslist for like style and shopping and like help and advice and whatever. And it, that then led to someone who needed help or whatever. And I started to build like a personal styling business. Nice. And then I had no idea about this, by the way. Yeah. Crazy. (laughs) I don't think I ever told you this story. Never. This is real, real. We're not making this up. Like you really didn't know this. (laughs) No. And I like one thing led to another. So I started building a personal styling business. And then when I realized like I was really good at it and I felt really comfortable doing it, I was like, well, it's going to be a better way to do this. And one thing led to the next and the next. And I started to network and build. And somewhere along the way, I landed, I started a personal style blog, which was Little Lime Dress. Yes. No longer. Um, and But it was just like a fashion and style blog. So I was like, okay, I'll show people that I can do this job by wearing good stuff and like showing them that I look okay. And that then brought me to Full Figured Fashion Week, which brought me to, they had some, what was the thing called? The blogger. They had something where like we were all. Like a little group. It's where we met all right. of our friends. Like it's right. where like our, like our kind of. It was of a blogger incentive, blogger group, blogger something. something. Whatever. Okay. Back when blog, we, blog was bloggers, not right. influencers. Right. Now digital content creators. Right. Oh, times have changed. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, it just brought me to Full Figured Fashion Week. And there I was networking with somebody else. Somebody needed a stylist. I was like, sure. Literally have never stepped foot on a set. And I was like, I could do that. No problem. And I like said yes to the job and left and was like, what the hell did I just agree to? <gasps> I know nothing. I never assisted anybody. I never, nothing. Oh my God. But you know what? Listen, you put on a little red lipstick, you say a prayer in the morning <laughs> and you head out the door with the stuff you need and you just figure it out. That's amazing. And I did. I just figured it out. I think that I mean, when it's part of your journey, it does all come together. Also, you're a really business woman, so I'm pretty sure you went home, researched, like did a whole deep dive. Well, did thank you, you very much? I did. I See, mean, I'm I a little OCD when it comes to like yeah. getting. You I just didn't just be show informed. up and say, "I'm here." No, you knew. But it was hard. It's harder to do yeah. because back then it was not like Insta was just. Was new. even, I, Insta even out? it was new because we were doing like sick bad filters, you know what I mean? Like the original, <laughs> like the first level filters, but it wasn't where you can use that as a resource. Like okay. if somebody wants to be a stylist now, you can literally Absolutely. become a stylist by just going on Instagram and following stylists and like taking each step to right. get it. Like it's just that didn't right. exist, right? Which was similar to kind of like your story, like it doesn't exist to just decide to wake up one day to be. No, I worked, your own I worked in finance. I actually had a nine to five and I worked in the financial district and I lost my job. And so I was like, what am I going to do Mentally. with my life? But I needed to keep a job because I needed to help my dad with, you know, money in the house and stuff like that. But I was like, let me see if I can, you know, be a model. I wanted to be an aspiring model. And, you know, I took pictures and I took the last little bit of money that I had that was supposed to be for rent. And I took a trip to Arizona to take these really, really great pictures. Um, So I kind of started my portfolio that way. And then I always loved makeup. I think in my other life, I was a makeup artist. Don't tell Christian. (laughs) Um, I, I just love makeup. So I, Christian was so, is our, is our friend and <laughs> very long time friend in the industry, but our makeup makes artist look like this. and our glam. And he is why yeah. we look, look like beautiful. this. <laughs> so I, I was a, a Lore subscriber, Lore magazine. And I remember following this story, these three women, they photographed them in like the most horrible looking clothes and they put them on a diet and they were not big by any means at all. They were like maybe like a size 10 or something like that. And their outfits were shabby, like nothing you would want to be seen in. And they photographed them. They put them on a diet. They lost like 25 pounds each. Then all of a sudden their photo shoot was so cute. I can't believe this is what used to be. Like This is what they used to do. It wouldn't even exist now. No. Oh, please. 
So I was so put off by that because I'm a subscriber and I love makeup. And I'm like, how could this be? Like, why is this allowed? Because I'm a subscriber and this doesn't make me feel good. This does not represent me. So I decided I'm going to recreate those after pictures in my size. And I'm no going to ask my two friends. Way. We were all the same size, size 18, 20. And each one of us took one person. We recreated those pictures. And what? then I wrote a letter to all the top editors at Allure Magazine. This is so Maddie. This is such a tip. I don't know this story at all, and I want to know where this heads. This is going, but like I don't know the details of this. I sort of do, but like this is such a typical Maddie moment. Yes, like, because I'm like I don't like that, and I'm going to tell you why. And my my letter to them, because there was no email or anything that I could get to, my l written letter was, I am a subscriber. A letter for if if if. Gen Zers are listening. A letter is where you put a pen to a piece of paper and write what you're thinking. Exactly. <laughs> so I wrote the letter and I get, an, I get, I think it was a phone call that said, we want to print your letter and your pictures. We really thought it was really thoughtful and they printed the letter. And then I get an email from someone that says, you know, these people are looking for you. And it was like Michelle Weston and you're trying you know, to find the like troublemaker. People were, literally, <laughs> who is this girl? Why, why was it okay for her to do that? And I was just like, well, my mother said I was born in the United States. That's it. And that I, I have the right to speak my mind. So that's what I did. I spoke my mind. And, you know, long story short, one of those people that I met was my now business partner. I've had, Shut up. we've been in business for 16 years. One of those people that reached out to me. That is, so, that's like a chills moment. That's like a that real. That letter got me here. That's great. And, and we wonder why we live a life of gratitude. Because exactly. both of our paths were literally just by circumstance. Now, right. I don't think that it's luck. I don't believe in luck. I think no. it's, it's fate. And I think it's the right place in the right time because that is where you're supposed to be and Absolutely. circumstance happens not to us but for us and so I just think it's so crazy <laughs> to me that if you weren't you the outspoken Maddie that we all know and love because that is how you've built your empire of PMM being outspoken and saying how you feel and representing and serving others and the underserved community but if you weren't that way if that's not your DNA you would have never wrote that letter. Exactly. I would have been too scared to do that. And we wouldn't have been in these chairs. Exactly. And we wouldn't have had 20 minutes of figuring out how to sit in them. <laughs> so really, at the end of the day, like... We need to find that blooper it's ultimately and show about, it. It's ultimately about the letter. Exactly. Like, the letter got the us letter to the started. chair. Exactly. That's crazy. So I think that gratitude and style is going to be about sharing those experiences because I learn from knowing people's challenges and how they overcame them. So it's going to be style. It's definitely living in gratitude, but living in gratitude sometimes it's kind of, you know, knowing what the journey is and you don't always know what's in front of you. Yeah. Like it's not all sprinkles and rainbows. Like right. we have to tell you like the purpose of this, right. Is to share our story and share other people's stories Agreed. and their journeys and kind of how you have to, the only way out is through. And, right. and once you're through, that's where the gratitude comes from, right? That's the fuel to the flame. Exactly. And so that's really what this is about. Like, exactly. yeah, it's going to be like light and airy, but it's also, we got to share some of yes. that stuff. Definitely inspirational. But before we leave, let's talk about, we're always going to end each episode yes, I'm so with, excited about this. what are you loving in style right now? Mm -hmm. And something that you're grateful for right now. Yeah. So, Okay. Two things, every episode, we're closing it out this way. Very yes. exciting. So what's in style right now? So for me, I think the most in style thing right now is spending quality time with the people who bring you the most amount of joy. Agreed. Like ultimately, that is what's most important. And really at the end of the day, like it's what we all knew, but I think we let life get in the way. Mm -hmm. I think if anything, the last year has taught us like there's nothing more important than feeling that pure joy and Agreed. whatever whether it's something an activity or a person whatever gives you that joyous feeling that's what's in style to me so right. like for me it's obviously spending time with my family and like my cousins and like just being like us um but that's I just, I feel like it's so important to not lose sight of that. I'm never going back to the way things were. Yeah. Like I'm never, ever yes. going back 100%. to 100%. not doing all of the fun thing. Like I don't ever want to do it again. Like never. So I, that's, what's the most in style thing for me. Spend doing whatever brings you the most amount of pure joy. Um, and what am I grateful for? 
I cannot, I'm going to, you asked me first, so I'm going to take it. I know you want to say the same thing, (laughs) but I am so grateful for this, this moment right now. This took a really long time and eventually over time, over the next, you know, however many episodes we're lucky enough to do this, but we'll share how difficult it was to get here and like what hoops we had to jump through to make this happen. But I think I'm grateful for this because it's something new. And I've said to you a few times, like, haven't felt excited about something yes. new and fresh in a long time. Right. Um, and that makes me incredibly grateful. So that's yes. what I'm grateful for. On to you. Oh, All right. What is see. in style right now for you? Could be anything. What's in style for me is living in the present and embracing who you are. God, it's a deep, this is a deep episode. Yeah. It's a good one. I didn't one. mean for it it's to good. be, but I feel like my, the people who follow me on social media are, tend to be a little bit younger than I am and I'm making it less scary to get older. Yes, you're going to get white hair. Yes, you're going to get wrinkles. Look guys, look, see, I don't look like I did five years ago, but it's okay. I'm still fabulous. I'm still better. the same person. And I feel like I'm taking that 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 kind of you know scariness, that tinge away from it, and they appreciate that because I come to them, I'm still grateful for who I am. It's okay that I look a little bit older. It's okay that I'm not as fast, and it's okay that I need a nap, Megan, after this. Okay, <laughs> but Sorry. that to me is what's in style. Like cue the actually, coffee. cue the coffee, somebody, <laughs> please. Yeah. Um, <laughs> celebrating yourself is in style for me. And I want to come. Oh, I love that. Like really amplify that. And what I'm grateful for is definitely this moment. Just like you. I'm so grateful. Yes, absolutely. (laughs) I think we worked really hard to get to this place. And, you know, I'm so grateful, you know, that Lane Bryant, you know, saw us and believes in us so much that they wanted to partner with us on our first episode. So I'm really excited about that. I love them so much. Yes, yes. I just really do. So that's it. On to the next one and the next one and the next episode. I know. Let's I'm get so it. excited. This was amazing. Yes. Episode two. Yes. Here we come. <laughs>